Hello and welcome back to Ghost Hunter. Today we're going to explore the new school. This level is fairly interesting uh, for a variety of reasons, partially because it introduces a new enemy type. So, let us um, just change to the uh, weapon with infinite ammo for reasons you'll see in a minute. As we head through to the next major section of the game, the west wing of the new school. This enemy type can be quite annoying, uh, which is why I'm first of all heading upstairs to a little bit of resource management. Because there are two bathrooms in this area that don't really have anything much in them, but they have equipment and they have health. So we're going to head up there first. But actually, you know, first we're going into the janitor room rather to uh, turn this, because this will be necessary for the rest of this room. I forgot about the janitor thing. <laughs> Then we'll be using one of the bathrooms for resource management. Yeah, there's very little actual uh, indication you'll need to do this as well, which is fairly mean of the game. Uh, it does that a few times where it's like, you need to do something, but it won't tell you what it is. Until it's a little too late. And also, this whole building is actually a puzzle. The game doesn't tell you that, nor does it give you any indication that anything's wrong, except for the fact that none of the doors will actually open for us, except for the bathrooms and the janitor's room. So we'll see the nature of this puzzle in a minute. We'll see it right now. You have to go through these doors in numerical order, and in every one of these doors, there is one of the new enemies. You have to do this first of all to smoke up the room because this guy is invisible. They are the poltergeists, as you can probably tell from the fact that they're throwing everything around. They're fairly cute, but they're also fairly annoying to fight because they're really hard to shoot. Because when you do hit them with the grenade, they move very quickly to get out your way. That's why I'm using the pistol here because it has infinite ammo. Don't have to worry about wasting bullets on these idiots, or oh, God forbid, shotgun shells. Oh, this is a cool thing you can do. If you get up close to these guys, you can just shove a grenade straight in them, and it helps a little bit because now you can just look for the grenade floating in the midair. And there we go, that's the first of the poltergeists. Yeah, every numbered room has at least one of these things. They are really annoying to fight, uh, but they have. They're used in interesting ways as the game progresses. It's just here, they're mostly throwing TVs at you. So it's a fairly underwhelming introduction to them, and it's just they're just annoying to fight. They're kind of like the Boca Blins in uh, Wind Waker, where they're a little cute, but then they start swarming you. And get annoying really quickly, because they won't stop coming. Well, in this case, it's because they won't stop throwing shit at you. This room's luckily already all smoked up, because of the fire in the middle of it, so let's take care of this guy. As you can see, these guys can do a lot of damage very quickly, because this furniture can actually... It hits pretty hard. You may have noticed there are two of these guys in here as well. This escalates very quickly. <laughs> you can see we've already lost a large amount of health, which is why I'm being kind of uh, having to be kind of careful in here because this section of the game can be very difficult because of just how quickly they can hit you compared to how quickly you find them. They are very annoying enemies in the long run. Uh, well, at this point in the game, they're very annoying enemies. Again, they get they used in interesting ways, but we'll see those later. Thanks. Feel like I'm playing snooker sometimes when fighting these guys. Yes. And there we go. That's both the pulse. Yeah, already two of them in one room. And that's only the second time we're fighting these things. There are five numbered rooms here, it's going to get annoying. Luckily they don't increase beyond two, but let's just take care of this weapon real quick. While he's in our way. Nice sidle there. That was a very stylish dodge for something so big. And yeah, while they're fading out like that, you can't actually hit them even when you've got the stun grenade going. They're protected by the static mode. So this is what the bathrooms are for which is these little rooms here, they contain ammo in some cases, like here. I believe those are our explosive grenades, and over here we have our health that we need. Only about 11, but it's still good enough for now. So let's move on and continue exploring the bottom floor of this area. 
It's weird that they have all those military recruitment posters dotted around, or at least they look like them anyway. Like they see, I want you to vote, vote Uncle Sam things, because it's like, it's a high school. You, then again, though, the army has been done to recruit for young, so that's, yeah. Probably end up seniors, but it's still weird. <laughs> Yeah, the swamp can be both a blessing and a curse. And yeah, we're pretty much going to be fighting them two at a time for a long time in this game when we do fight them. Luckily, they're a fairly rare enemy outside of this section. Well, already we've gone back down to 60 health. Less and less. Yeah, these guys, this area can be quite hectic. Because there are very few checkpoints in this area, and the enemies do a lot of damage. It's a little unfair. It's very atmospheric though, I'll give it that. Even if the atmosphere is largely fart gas. Come on. It was right there. <laughs> I call bullshit on that one. It just must have teleported or something. These guys move really quickly, but let's just nip that in the bud. And there we go. It was already dead, it just needed to be grenaded bloody things. That move doesn't come up often, but it's kind of neat when it does, because it feels very kind of like an action movie kind of move, with the whole shoving the grenade straight in their stomach kind of a thing. And now we have the penultimate poltergeist room. I'll just be checking my ammo and everything like that. No, that was me bringing up the health thing, I just remembered. That was me making it bring up the health meter, because now I'm going to head back to the other bathroom. So that we can get some of that health before we go into room 4, because, as you've noticed, we're already getting fairly low on it. I like the new track for the new school. It's much more atmospheric than the music from the original, which is much more action-y. Although it hasn't got any layers to it, which is kind of a shame. It's more just the scales themselves in, like, tr constantly chilling strings. So back downstairs to room four. Yeah, this particular section of the game is a little tedious. But here we go, we're nearly done. Now this one's got a bit of an interesting trick to it. It's actually, weirdly enough, the easiest one because we can actually hide. But we need something we're missing, we need a flask. Shit. Luckily there's one right there. Time to learn a little chemistry. First we make some smoke. And now we blow it out with a fan. Yeah, that's kind of weird because you don't really see the smoke coming up before it gets fanned out, but you know, that's kind of the idea behind it is you're making kind of a smoke screen out of chemicals. And here we're actually safe from this guy, we just need to get a bead on him. Ah, there. Because he actually doesn't ever come in here. I'm not sure if he can manage to ever, but it looks like he's just getting stuck because he just keeps getting that weird thing where the stool's kind of in the doorway trapping him a little bit. This is kind of an area we can sort of almost break him, but not quite, because again, he might potentially thread the needle and manage to get one of those TVs through the window, which would be annoying. He didn't in this case, but he could have done. Yeah, there we go. He could have easily gone through the door, but didn't. There we go. And he actually dropped a little health. That's nice of him. Yeah, one thing I continually mention in this game that I like is that the balance of health and ammo is very strong. You'll often have a point where it kind of sort of rubber bands, where it kind of, you feel very low on health for a certain length of time, but then just as you're feeling in danger, enemies will start dropping good chunks of it, that kind of thing, where it's like, it'll give you low enough health to be in danger, but not enough to really screw you over. There's always going to be like a pickup in the next level, that kind of thing, or... Uh, something way of mitigating the situation. 
even if it's just beginning you get level with easy enough enemies, that kind of thing. Let's just finish that guy off with a shotgun. So we've got plenty of ammo and this guy was annoying me. Yeah, the battle music hadn't changed when it comes to the the revenants, that's still that same music. And it's good music, so I don't mind it. And it makes sense, they're kind of a signature enemy of this game, so of course they get their own little theme tune. So let's octo that up these stairs, this bizarre animation. Temporary half-life this. <laughs> and yeah, another one already. Let's just get rid of him before it becomes annoying. We don't want to lose any more health than I have to in this area because we have one more poltergeist room coming up. So let's deal with it. This may perhaps be one of the more interesting ones even if it's kind of fiddly. Uh, and we'll see when we enter it in a few seconds. Just past here we are. I'm just making sure though. Yeah, here we are, yeah. So here, we have no obvious way of making smoke. So how will we deal with this? Well, remember that valve we put, turned all the way back in the janitor's room? Yeah, let's put off the sprinklers. Just need to set off a few of them, but, so I've got the pistol out for this. Any puzzle related stuff like any shooting I use the gun for, because infinite ammo. And now it's... We got lucky there. <laughs> Managed to grenade him. And it was kind of comical when he was holding something, like, just, uh, when you could actually, like, see the grenade just floating there. Looks a little bit funny. It's like those old, like, cartoons of invisible characters where they're wearing, like, a hat and a scarf kind of a thing. <laughs> so similar effect to me, but... Luckily in this room there's only this one poltergeist. And now I've taken care of all those poltergeists. We have a new ability! This is why we went left first, because now we need to head back to the junction, because we still have other things we need to do. I call the broken lockers, that's kind of a neat thing. This is just me checking for any pickups at the end of the hall, but there aren't any. But it's the kind of game where sometimes it hides stuff in places like that, so it's always best to make certain that you haven't just misremembered or missed something. I mean, they're never entirely vital, but it's nice to have that extra bit of shotgun ammo or that extra grenade, even if you're never going to use them offensively. Because why would you? They're terrible. Low range, tiny radius, they're just kind of pathetic grenades, really. So yeah, now we're done with that wing, let's head to the east wing. And we'll see why we needed that ability. So you would have been completely roadblocked here. Yeah, now we have. We still would have. It does that annoying thing where if we'd gone left first, it would have given us this note. Which would have been kind of confusing if we didn't know you were meant to go somewhere else to get the poltergeist ability. This game does that a few times. So let's summon Astral and put a new ability to use because we have a lot of animal objects to move out the way. Which is exactly what poltergeists do. So let's take care of that. This ability is finicky as hell, by the way. You have to be pretty much on the exact right pixel to use it. Here it is kind of a gimme. But at least one or two times later in the game it becomes a nightmare to use, even though it's kind of a fun one to watch her do. It's kind of fun to watch her just scatter around like that. It's pretty dark in here. Ah, if only I had a torch. And yeah, he's not kidding. This area is so beyond dark. No lighting whatsoever, all you have is your flashlight in here, and it just gets darker as it goes on, it's ridiculous. And here we get a new enemy type. These guys are recolors of the blue spooks. They are have a bit of more interesting name though. They are called the Death Angels. They are the first real upgrade to the enemy type in this game. Like the first enemy that's basically a template uh, recolor. But they have the and they're very similar to fight to the blue spooks. They're just much more mobile and much hardier. And their attacks do more damage and they can they can shoot three times in a row, which is vaguely interesting, but they're still just blue spooks, but harder. Let's just take care of this one. And yeah, it just takes a long time to fight these guys. That's the only thing they have going for them, is more health than is necessary. 
They're just there to make you empty your ammo into the ceiling and waste it. Luckily they drop plenty of it though, so that's not too bad. They're always dropping a bit of something. So, let's head to what seems to be a fairly run-down part of the new school. Clip through that ledge a little bit as we head up to this floor and head to this new room. Because a lot of this area is basically just darkness and ruins in this section. It's uh, fairly tense to play through because you can never really see where the enemies are coming from until they start attacking you and then you get the flashlight on them and can actually see them properly. At that point you tend to be able to keep an eye on where they are in relation to you, but... First of all we just need to spawn this guy without going into that corridor. But this guy's going to be a pain because of this hole in the floor but we can never access that section of the building off. Because he'll often go hiding down there. Here's me trying to find the bloody thing. These guys can be annoying because they're black. So they can blend into the rest of the shadows. And become a real nuisance to find. But I want to shoot it so it's not shooting me. And there we are. It finally spawned back in. It may have actually gone above the school. Because these guys, unlike the blue spooks. These guys will go out of bounds. I mean properly. I don't just mean like in the graveyard where they went just beyond the fences. These guys go completely out of bounds of the entire level. And can be kind of hard to tell when they're going to come back in if you to actually shoot them more. Because this guy's currently all the way out there, I think. Like, just in the, along the wall to our right, where we'll never be able to go. There it is. Cheeky little guy. Or girl, or whatever it is. And this is why I was waste, waiting before coming in here, because Revenant's all over the place in here as well. So that's that taken care of, let's continue moving on. Let's get the flashlight back out. Yeah, it tends to go in that kind of pattern, where it's like legends to fight blue s the uh, Death Angels on, and then the flat plane where you fight a few revenants, and then it just kind of keeps going from there. But for this one, to support it, we actually need to do a bit of platforming. So we have to put ourselves in a very precarious position, which I guess is a decent job building suspense because you haven't seen the enemy in here, but you know it's gonna be because that's the way this level's gone so far, this section of the game. And there it is. So let's dislatch, unlatch from that thing. Disengage, I guess, would be a better term and drive it into our corner because these guys, the one thing they do is quite nice is sometimes they will just go hide in the corner forever and get kind of stuck there until the grenade waits. Uh, just kind of, you can just kind of like corner them like this and just kind of wear them down while they're trapped there trying to escape you. These guys luckily can get a little dumb at times which makes them much more bearable to fight when you're fighting multiple ones and one of them gets stuck like that because it means you can just take care of it. And yeah, this area is obnoxiously dark. This is really hard to find your way around in if you don't really know the layout. Because you never know whether the door you're going through is going to lead to the actual progress or just more stuff. Oh, which I mean, then end with more pickups. So here we are. Yep, three revenants at once. It's really pulling out the stops now. Luckily, the shotgun makes relatively short work of them, so let's just get in on there. This guy's kind of blocking half those shots, so that was kind of annoying. That taken care of, let's finish this guy off now. Yeah, a lot of them are used there, but that guy was blocking a lot of shots there. <laughs> so there we go. Let's continue our ascent slash descent through this area, because it varies which way you're going. I like the way it does that, you're always alternating between an upper and a lower floor. It makes the level feel a bit more dynamic than it actually is. But here we have a little classroom, that's kind of neat. I don't know what those fees are kind of... I'm assuming those probably are those like chemical storage cupboards or something, I like fume hoods probably. And here becomes one of the more annoying fights in this area. Yep, two of them. The thing I like to do here is actually alternate between them. When one flees the scene, focus on the other one. Call back the grenade early and just keep like using it like that. Just keep 
you alternate in between them. When one flees, get the grenade back and shove it in the other one because it will always be there for you. I forgot to in this case, but normally that's in this case, fight. That's what I do. Because at least keeps it mildly distracted while it's in there. Because at least then it's now concentrating on fleeing instead of shooting. So you could just keep the one in the uh, level sh in the room shooting at you. Uh, stunned with that by making it flee and then just kind of shoot it until the other one comes back and just keep alternating like that. That's the best strat I found for this fight. Otherwise, you'll just be getting bombarded by one while waiting for the other and that's no fun. Cheeky! Using the school for cover. That's what I'm doing. There we are. So let's head out the other room. Still getting a little confused by the aiming a little there, but let's go to what's left of this bathroom. And yeah, we have something to clamber down here, so let's head down there now. Yeah, this part of the game is a little over long, but I like the atmosphere it builds. Partially by keeping, by like doing what a lot of games are kind of afraid to do, uh, at least at this time anyway, and uh, letting an area just be dark. It does a good job building a kind of sense of uh, being in an area that's completely abandoned because, like, not even the game itself is lighting engine is on your side here. Yeah, yeah, another room with more. It's like, yeah, at this point, it's like, yeah, we get it. The area has started to get old at this point. This game, this game is normally good about that kind of thing, but this particular set of areas, it's while each each half of the uh, new school is very distinct from its each other, uh, it's still kind of each part of it still goes a little too long to remain fun. But we're very nearly done with this part now. And then we'll be back to a relatively interesting part after this. Yeah, again, sometimes this game can do quite well with keeping the areas fairly short, but sometimes it kind of drags on a little bit. I mean, these areas aren't any longer than the areas were in the swamp. They're each like 15 minutes of gameplay. But it's 15 minutes of a kind of gameplay that can't last 15 minutes because it's basically just fighting the same three enemies over and over again. In the first set of... Uh, in the first thing it was the Poltergeist and the Revenants, now it's the Revenants and the Death Angels. So even though the Death Angels and Poltergeist are new, it gets old. So let's pick up these. And now we have our second grenade type, the Smoke Grenades. AKA the ones we'll actually use. Because as you may have guessed, the Smoke Grenades are invaluable when dealing with Poltergeists. Because it allows you to just put smoke wherever the hell you want regardless of what actual things are in the room to smoke with. And there's infinite smoke grenades, so that's very nice for the game. It doesn't let you run out of them because that would screw you over against fighting poltergeists. That's one thing I know, it makes sure you always have enough of some kind of ammo that's useful to you. Like Even if you run out of ghost energy and shotgun shells, you can still fall back on the pistol because it's still reasonably powerful. Way in. Negative. Oh, you said it. An impasse. Recommend you continue exploring the school. We need more power. 
Well, that's certainly unfortunate. It appears Hawksmore actually has a hold over oh. Steele's mind now. So while she can't always see him, because while she can occasionally see him, that's only when he deliberately allows her to, he can control her at any point. I mentioned poltergeists do interesting things in this game. This is the first of them. There's only one poltergeist in this room, but he keeps us progr from progressing until we can kill him. Uh, which we can only do when we have the smoke grenades. Beforehand, he's still here, still getting in our way. But we can't actually do anything about him. He just doesn't actually spawn, it's just the, uh, he starts throwing TVs at you. And the stairs unbuild themselves, which is a pretty cool effect, but then... Can't do anything about it. Something interesting there, the librarian is actually voiced by Jane Hamilton, the same actress that does Lady de Montfort. So I just want to say well done Jane, you've made two very distinct voices there that uh, definitely sell that they are very different characters. So uh, yay on her, she's actually got quite a lot of range going on there that I'm enjoying. So let's head upstairs, get the first of the two books that she's lost. I believe this is the history of the Black Hawk. And next we're going to head outside to explore a part of the school we don't really see that much, the actual outside of it. Once we've figured out where to go from this little corner of hell. This is a bit confusing but you have to go down this way. So next we will be exploring the car park and seeing what we'll find there beyond maybe the other book. Maybe not, we'll see. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.